This is a marriage certificate. And Alice Maud Gretton married Martin Gebhard in 1878 in Aston, so they're in Birmingham. She was 18, she was young, and he was 26. Alice Gretton's father was James Gretton, who was a hair merchant. What's a hair merchant? Maybe we can find out a bit more about him, which would be my three times great grandfather. Okay. First name James, last name Gretton, O N. Oh, James Gretton, horn and hair merchant, which makes me think he was a merchant of horns and hair. <laughs> But then it says, and dealer in English and foreign sizing, which makes me think it's clothing. Um, so I don't really understand the terminology. And the address that's on here for him is 61 Lower Trinity Street. It's obviously in Birmingham. Maybe I should go there and I don't know, see if there's anything that can tell me any more. Emma's on her way to see where her three times great-grandfather, James Gretton, was based. For me, Birmingham's the best place in the world. Here she is, the ball ring. Such a funny building there. Thank you. Emma's arranged to meet Birmingham historian, Carl Chin. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm all right. Yeah? So you're in the back streets of Birmingham now? I'm in the back streets of Birmingham. Tell me what you want to know. Um, I, I want to know about James Gretton, yeah. my three times great grandfather. OK. I wonder if you know who that is. That's so James. I have no idea. Is it? Yeah. No! Yeah. That's James Gretton, your three times great grandfather. He's got my dad's eyes. Has he? Yeah, kind of heavy lidded and little. All I know is that he either lived or worked on Lower Trinity Street. Yeah, he lived here, down there on the right. So he lived here or yeah, worked he lived down there, here? He or lived, lived here. and worked here? He lived and worked here. Okay. His street pattern's the same. The pub over there, the Wagon and Horses, was there in the 1850s. So he might have been in that pub? Yeah, he could well have done. But what I'm most baffled about is his job. When I read the, the documents about him, it said he was a horn and hair merchant, which I, I literally am like, what? <laughs> I find him at the age of 14, he's a brush maker. Is he? And he would have been making his brushes, probably for ladies, and the handle would be made of animal horn. Right, right. OK, so the horn was the handle and yes. the hair was the brush? Yeah, and the hair would have been horse's hair. Oh, right, right. so he made hair brushes? Yeah. And right. then... Why didn't he just say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, later on, in 1851, he's moving away now from making brushes, but now he's becoming a merchant. He's buying and selling horn and hair. One of the other things that he does, he makes glue and size. Size is a, a watered-down version of glue. You yeah. make glue with animal waste. Bits of skin, the noses, the ears, the tendons, yeah. Boil it and you get the collagen. Right. And it's the collagen, <laughs> the thick, gooey substance that makes the glue. Right. And he's typical of the small gaffers of Birmingham. Gaffer? Is yeah, gaffer? bosses. Right. He's Was a small he? gaffer. OK. So don't forget, Birmingham is a city of a thousand trades. That okay. means there's a lot of small workshops as well as big factories. Okay. You could become a small gaffer if you're a skilled man. So he's doing well. I've got some documents to show you. This is a legal case that they're reporting. Important nuisance information. James Bliss, Inspector of Nuisances for the borough, preferred a charge against Mr James Gretton of Lower Trinity Street, Horn and Hair Factor, for carrying on that business in such a manner as to create a nuisance and be injurious to health. So, is, is creating a nuisance kind of a big thing back then? Yeah, it's like, very much like environmental health. So they're basically saying his business was not welcome and that it was a danger to people's health. Now, can you imagine from the... The smells coming from boiling all that. Yeah. 
Otherwise, waste of animals, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people think they're going to get diseases. Okay. And they can get some diseases, Emma. Right. Anthrax. What? Terrible disease that can be from infected animals. So a lot of people are complaining, but then a bit later on... Mr John Suckling, for the defence, put in a memorial signed by more than 100 neighbours stating that Mr Gretton's business was not a nuisance nor injurious. Right, so there was a battle going on, yeah, basically. Yeah. Some of the community are saying that he's the cause of it, or the disease that's going around at the minute. The other half of the community are backing him, saying it's nothing to do with yeah. him. So why would 100 neighbours support him, do you think? It could be some of the poor who are thinking he's providing work around here. Right, OK. You need jobs if you're yeah, poor. Yeah, you do, yeah. To help Emma understand why James Gretton's business caused a nuisance, Carl is taking her to some working-class Victorian houses, now preserved as a museum. Now, your great-great-great-grandfather, you would have had something like this yard, probably two-thirds of this, I would have thought. Yeah. What we've got to understand is, can you see how tight it would have been? Yeah. People living on top of each other. yeah. Yeah. And you can imagine, can't you, the smells coming from James's yard. I'm getting a well-painted picture of um, work life yeah. and what he did and the trouble he was kind of in at that yeah. time in court. Yeah. So what about his wife and the children? Well, here's the 1861 census okay. for him. Now, 1861. All right, so if we read along there... Street, Lower Trinity Street. Street. So you've got James Gretton, who's yeah. the head. Uh, Mary. And there's an A afterwards, which is probably for Anne. So, all right, so Mary Ann Gretton, his wife. Yeah, who is your three times? Great grandmother. <laughs> and that is Mary. Is that her? That's Mary. Oh my God. She, her hair looks nice, yeah. but then she's got enough brushes. She's got enough brushes. <laughs> <laughs> Emma wants to find Mary Ann and James Gretton's daughter, her great great grandmother, Alice Maud Gretton. She was born in 1860 a year before this census was taken. Clifford is nine. Son? Yeah. So he's got a son who's nine. Yeah. Agnes is eight. Yeah. Clara is six. And there's no Alice. No Alice. This is another census return. OK. For... Heath Mill Lane. Uh, Abraham. Reading. Hannah. His wife. Well, yeah. And Alice Maud Gretton. Yeah. So why was she living with Abraham Redding and Hannah Redding when she's only one? Had they given her up? Would they have given her up? Perhaps the mum, your great 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 grandmother Mary, Marianne. yeah, is thinking it's smelly. There's Not a good stench for here. such a small child. Yeah. All this hair. What do babies do when they're crawling oh, yeah, around? They crawl and everything yeah. hands are in their mouths. It might be that's the reason. Right. Health reasons. So do you know anything about what happened next? What happened with the nuisance report? Have a read of the London Gazette. Yeah. It's a, a notice to the court. As directed by the Bankruptcy Act, name and description of the debtor as in the deed, James Gretton. So he's gone bankrupt. Bankrupt. Now, he's fallen on harder times, he's gone bankrupt. Yes. Alice isn't living with him. Yeah. What happened to the family next? For that question to be answered, my advice would be to see a family historian. OK. I kind of feel like he was doing quite well, but then it all just kind of fell away from underneath him. I don't know why they didn't have Alice living with them when she was so young. The only thing, actually, I can imagine as a mum of a one-year-old myself was that for her own health and safety, she shouldn't have been in that environment. And from what we've heard with the nuisance report, that would kind of make sense. Because I can't see how you would otherwise not have your baby living with you. <laughs> 